The mountain ranges of North Africa, especially the Anti-Atlas, have spectacular large-scale folds seen on Google Earth, picked out by sedimentary layers over hundreds of kilometres. In part one, we looked at the Young High Atlas range. So now we go to the folds of the Anti-Atlas and we'll be guided by the geological map. So let's start by building up a stratigraphic section for the eastern Anti-Atlas ranges. The Precambrian basement here is shown as a rusty claret colour, a late Proterozoic magmatic arc. So the hill just behind me here is the base of the sedimentary cover, top, top end of the Precambrian and the slightly older Precambrian basement, well it's in the road cutting in here. These rocks are part of a group called the Wazazet group. They're uh, igneous rocks. Let's have a closer look. So a Precambrian igneous basement here to the succession that will build up into the Anti-Atlas. The low ground here is largely igneous basement overlain and overlooked by these rocks of the escarpment. And up this escarpment winds the road south to the Sahara. Repeatedly rebuilt and improved as befits one of the world's great historical routes. But what of the rocks? So I'm up on the old uh, Dinny Fifth Pass provides a final glimpse of the High Atlas range there and gives us a really good shot of these rocks here which are Paleozoic, they're lower Paleozoic, in fact they're Cambrian strata and they dominate the landscape around here. Let's go and see how they outcrop. So the lower Cambrian here is a world of sheety sandstones They're really well differentiated. Some are well laminated like this. Ancient floodplain and plier deposits. Others are more massive. OK, well, let's zoom in on some of these thicker sandstone units within the Lower Cambrian succession here. And we can see that they are lensoid in the outcrop. So these are stacked channel sandstones. And some of these lower Cambrian rocks are gravels and conglomerates, braid plane deposits. So we've got continental lower Cambrian rocks, but there are more cover units below. Well, the Cambrian strata are not the oldest sedimentary rocks in the Anti-Atlas. In fact, the succession starts with late Precambrian strata, and that's what this stream bed is exposing here. There's some really spectacular sedimentary structures in here. It's a bit of an aside, but let's just take a look at them while we're here. 
So these are siltstones and sandstones, fine sandstones. And if you look down on bedding planes, they're these really nice rippled surfaces. So, you know, just under very shallow standing water. But actually, there's some really spectacular things in this space here. A bit puzzling too. Let's come over and have a look. Well, base of here, we've got some very simple bedded sandstones. And actually the top of this package in here, a couple of meters thick, top of that's relatively simple too. But in the middle, goodness me. Let's start with some of the things that look a bit more recognizable. So down in here, we've got tiers of convolute lamination where you can see that this package of deformed lamination essentially dies out there and then it picks up again for this and then dies out and then continues. Fairly typical um, for well-sorted sandstones when they dewater and remobilize um, during their deposition. But then what about this? Well, this ball in here, you can trace the lamination into it and out the other side. So, first of all, we have to think about what this might have been originally. And I think it's a remobilized package of sediment. Inside in this, there's some coarser layers that are dismembered. But a lot of this shape is due to differential compaction, as this has been a resistant lump and these packages in here have compacted um, somewhat later leaving this as a resistant ball i've never really seen any like this before it's just crazy so this two meter thick unit of highly contorted lamination where well, we can take this and track it out it's quite unusual for the succession as a whole and well, maybe it's a seismite. In other words, what it could represent is catastrophic shaking of these deposits by earthquakes back in the geological record. And then through time, further sediment has compacted this lot down to make it into the textures that we see here today. Or maybe it builds up incrementally through a series of dewatering events which need not be as catastrophic as you might conclude if these were seismites. Really neat. Spectacular preservation of sedimentary structures, and these rocks are latest Precambrian in age. So much for below. What lies on top of the Lower Cambrian? Well, they're capped abruptly by deeper marine deposits of Middle Cambrian age. So that's a quick look at some of the rocks. The rusty claret volcanic art basement, the olive green late Proterozoic and Lower Cambrian sandstones, and the deeper water Middle Cambrian shown in a darker olive green, before a series of Ordovician rocks in teal colour, and these make dramatic hills above the oasis town of Agdaz. Now let's see how these rocks trace out fold structures. Some of these are pretty dramatic seen in road sections. But the folds, well, they're fairly open structures, aren't they? And the folds are most evident in satellite images. But as we're visiting Morocco on the ground, Let's return to outcrop. Rather nice dipping Cambrian strata going up over the top. 
to form an anticline, well, let's continue up the road and see what lies in the core of this anticline. So this is the core of an anticline here in the Anti-Atlas. It's wrapped by Cambrian and late Precambrian strata sedimentary rocks. And this material here that I'm sat around in here is the Precambrian substrate to the sedimentary cover. The French call this a boutonnier, a buttonhole, and it's a a window on inlier to the older basement rocks here. On the geological map, we can highlight these boutonniers, the precambrian cores to the anticlines. So Buazer is one of these. So these rocks are late Proterozoic, they're the basement that uh, underlies the Anti-Atlas. It's an igneous complex. These green weathered strips down there in the bottom of the valley in there, well, those are ultramafics. Well, the igneous geology that is the Precambrian of the Buazer inlier here contains uh, metal deposits for well cobalt, nickel and copper and they've been exploited for quite a long time. Makes a bit of a mess doesn't it? With care some of the abandoned mine workings provide fresh rocks This green weathering material, pasty, horrible, rotted stuff, is actually serpentinite, so hydrated mantle. It's part of the old ophiolite complex of the Buazer inlier. The serpentinites are intruded by basic dikes, also pretty rotted but they can be traced out as narrow ridges across the landscape. Well, it's always quite difficult to see what the rocks are through sort of the desert varnish you get, but Beneath this veneer, these rocks are essentially greenstones, they're altered basalt. So, part of the ophiolite sequence of the inlier. The Buazer inlier is part of an ophiolite accreted onto the old West African Cranton during the late Proterozoic Pan African orogeny. But its structure, the tectonic grain, has been used guiding the trend of the anti-atlas folds. So what are the age of all these folds? Check out the geological map. The folds are unconformably capped by these light green units, which are Cretaceous in age. So the folds are pre-Mesozoic. They formed during the late Paleozoic Variscan orogeny. On Google Earth, the subcretaceous unconformity can be traced out. So the Anti-Atlas is a large arch. It folds the Cretaceous rocks into a huge anticline. 
and the core of this anticline reveals an older orogenic belt and its Variscan folding. On Google Earth, these folds look dramatic, but they've developed with virtually no detectable deformation at the bed scale. So sedimentary structures are preserved intact. Well, this is more or less the end of the anti-atlas. It's the Variscan front in North Africa. You just take these rocks and they just fizzle out down, 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 down into the Sahara Desert and the West African Creton. So that's the end of the Variscan deformation and it's also the end of the topography. Both end here. So the Variscan front and the southern margin of the Anti-Atlas marks the end of our journey. In this, we've seen two young mountain ranges the High Atlas and the Anti-Atlas. In the High Atlas, the structures within the mountain belt are themselves young. But within the Anti-Atlas, it's a landscape that's young that reveals old Variscan structures in its core. So the Variscan front and the southern margin of the Anti-Atlas marks the end of our journey. We go further south now and we head into the desert. And eventually we'd reach the West African Craton. It's been a really great journey.